Hello. Some while ago, I did a video about uh, a potential problem, especially with 8mm uh, recordings, which can be made out of alignment if the guides on the deck uh, loosen off and go out of alignment. Actually, one of my most popular videos. And what I've been doing as a workaround to play back recordings that are recorded out of alignment is I've got a digital 8 camcorder here and I've drilled some holes in it so I can gain access to the head uh, guide adjustments. Uh, you can use a screwdriver but uh, a proper tool is even better. And I'll play a tape on that and adjust the input and exit guides for the head drum to try to match the original recording. And this way, I can go from a recording that's completely unplayable to something that's either perfect or very close. However, this poor camcorder has suffered a bit. It's been adjusted so many times, I can't now get a good picture even with a known good recording. So something's gone wrong with the tape path. So uh, we're going to have to have a look at that. Let's get stuck in. So here we have a known good recording uh, in the camcorder. I'll hit play. And we're getting, actually if you think about it, it's a lot of disturbance just at the bottom of the picture there. I know it jumps up and down sometimes, but at the bottom of the picture is a problem. So we're going to have to look at the tape path. If I'm lucky, I'll see what's wrong just by taking this cover off. But in all probability, I'll have to take all the cabinet work off for all the whole camcorder, which is a big job. But uh, so be it. Let's see what we can find. Can we see anything? No. So I'm going to have to take all this cabinet work off, which is uh, quite a lot of work. Actually, before I do, let's um, see what we can see just by looking at the uh, deck through a microscope. So we're looking at, uh, there's a supply spool. So let's uh, focus down past the head drum down to the guide that we adjust. So this is the input guide and we've been adjusting it, adjusting these here to this hole. Nothing appears to be damaged. That guide all looks to be in good, good shape. Then this is the bottom of the head drum. This is the lower head drum, static part. Being careful not to touch your head tips with this uh, pointy thing. Bit of debris there, but that's not relevant. There we can see the lower drum. All this is in good order, I can see. Going around towards the exit side. Then this is the lower drum. Out towards the guide at the back. Try to focus you on that. Again, there's no obvious damage to anything. Let's look at that guide, see if it's wobbly. Nope, that appears to be in good order. Everything looks okay, so we'll have to take the cabinet work off and watch it whilst it's playing. <laughs> Okay, we should have just about enough access now that uh, I can uh, look at the whole deck under the microscope when it's running. Okay, we're looking at the pinch roller and capstan. Let's put it into play. Ah! That doesn't look very healthy, does it? Can you see the tape wrinkling? <laughs> well, that is likely to be the problem. It may not be the only problem, but it would certainly stop the tape path from working properly. Uh, 
OK, well, let's start by seeing if we can just refurbish that pinch roll a little bit. Because that clearly isn't happy. And this brings me on to something I wanted to mention. You can actually get to the pinch roller in this stopped state fairly well with the uh, just that plastic cover off. You don't have to take all the deck to pieces like I have. And there's a problem with the plastic tube which sits at the top of the pinch roller here. It can be black or it can be white. And they have a habit of falling off and then the pinch roller falls out. Now... I've often wondered, could you make a replacement plastic tube? Because that disappears usually. Uh, and I thought, well, some thin plastic like the centre tube of a cotton bud might fit. But actually, the centre tube of a plastic cotton bud is too big. And now cotton buds are made without plastic tubes. They're made with card ones. But that just turns out to be convenient because here we have the uh, card tube. It's got a heavy plastic, heavy... I mean, it feels almost like plastic, but it is... Apparently not. Uh, this tube now is just about the right diameter to sit on that spindle. So you can cut a small length of this off and with a tiny dot of super glue in it, drop it onto that spindle and it will secure the pinch roller. And I have done that and it works. So let's uh, start by taking this pinch roller off and see if I can clean it up a bit and get it in good working order. I'm just going to pull on it whilst securing the bracket so that I don't bend the bracket. So I've just got a, a screwdriver here on the bracket and I'm just going to pull up on the pinch roller. What we don't want to do is lose this plastic thing. Okay, it started to come up, so now I can lift, I can lift the plastic uh, securing piece up carefully. Trying very hard not to lose it. There it is. Put that away carefully. Now, of course, what we'd like to do is to obtain a new pinch roller. But uh, you can imagine how easy they are to get. So uh, I'm going to clean this up with some glass paper. Uh, one of the things I think that happens here is, I don't know if you can see it here, it goes slightly out of shape. I think the problem is less to do with the surface having gone shiny than it is to do with it having gone out of shape. So it's somewhat raised at the, uh, the far edges and the tape is slipping through. So uh, I will sit it against some glass paper and try to get the whole surface a bit flatter. It's uh, Let's see what we can do. Okay, so I'm just going to try rubbing it like this. And I think that might take the high points off the top and bottom. Ideally, I suppose, you'd like to rotate it, but I don't have anything to clamp it in. Well, I think that's looking a little better. So I will clean all the uh, debris off this and give it another go. I should say I have used a product called Platen Clean in the, in the past, which is intended for computer printer rollers. And that can be useful when uh, a pinch roller has gone all shiny, but that's not really the biggest problem here. I think it's a shape is more of a problem than the glossiness was. OK, I reckon that'll work. Let's uh, give it a spin. So there's the uh, pinch roller support. Let's uh, put the pinch roller on there. Followed by the uh, oh so easily lost plastic support, which I just dropped on the floor, but was able to pick up fortunately. I'm just going to support the bracket a little bit while I push down on the uh, this plastic keeper thing. Right, 
Right. Let's uh, see if it will play the tape properly. No, it still doesn't look right, does it? That didn't look flat, that tape. Just uh, put it into play and check it again. No, it's still hopeless, isn't it? Look at that. And can you see the curl on the tape as it leaves that guide is being reflected on the input to the guide and so the tape is weaving out of alignment. Oh, I suspect that's not the only problem. Why is the tape curled on the input side? So, yes, there's a problem with the pinch roller, but that's not, I think, the whole problem. It's not flat on the input side. Why is that? It looks like the tape is hitting this motor bracket. Why would that happen? That would imply that this guide is way too high. Right, I'm getting some kind of a picture, but there's a mistracking line wandering around, but only one, which means I can't be a million miles away. Okay, so I've got the guides back into alignment. Uh, I may need to do a little more with the pinch roller, but we've uh, basically fixed it. Good. Okay, having um, realigned the deck properly, uh, I found that the pinch roller is actually fine and the tape was curling because the deck alignment was so far out. So now if I put, put a tape in that I believe is in good working order, uh, it uh, plays fine. Now I'm going to put in a customer tape which is recorded on a camcorder that was out of alignment. And it's struggling and what you can do if you get into this position to see that it is actually a recording there, just use picture search and you can see that the lines, the mistracking lines, are not evenly spaced. So an occasion it will drop into a picture. So this is one where we need to deliberately misalign the guides to try to uh, match the tape. It's a little bit of guesswork sometimes as to which guide to start with and indeed which way to turn it. It would help if it didn't suppress the picture. So I'll turn it a bit one way, a bit the other. Uh -huh. But not too far because this tape doesn't seem to be miles away. Getting closer. So it was the input guide had wound up on this tape. And we have good picture and sound. So I can now capture that with FireWire to a computer. Okay, I got it working. Actually, I didn't leave that pinch roller in here because uh, I didn't trust it. So this is the, my camcorder. It's a TRV120E and this has the slots I've cut in to allow me to adjust the guides for difficult tapes. And it just run a bunch of customer tapes and did a great job. Uh, so I wasn't happy with that pinch roller. I borrowed one from this Hi8 camcorder. This is one I featured uh, a few weeks ago. And a handy feature about this one is it's actually mono, a bit of a bottom of the range thing, but occasionally that can come in handy if I've got a tape which has got a, a slightly defective mono recording which triggers the stereo um, detector in a player which makes a horrible, terrible sound. So this has come in handy now and then, uh, so I'm going to have to um, find a replacement pinch roller for that. Now, not all uh, Sony 8mm equipment shares the same pinch rollers, so remember I said earlier they can have wh uh, bl white or black um, cap on the top that holds it in place. Well, it turns out 
they're not actually interchangeable. Uh, they're a slightly different diameter. So this camcorder, this is a digital eight, it's a pure digital eight, so it doesn't play analog ones. Uh, I thought, oh, I'll borrow the um, pinch roller from that one. And this has got the black type um, cap on the top of the pinch roller and it doesn't really fit. Uh, the pinch roller will kind of fit in the 120, um, but then the 120's one wouldn't fit in this. So the, the obviously the uh, size of the spindle that the pinch roller sits on is slightly different. Something I wanted to show you, on eBay and elsewhere, you can buy alignment kits like these, so say VCR alignment tools, and there's clearly some slightly different versions. And in there, they include various guide uh, adjusters, and this is one of them, and this is ideal for adjusting the uh, tape guides on 8mm equipment. Should we have a quick look in one of these? So of course, these are second hand, they may or may not contain all the original parts. Here's some of the tools used for adjusting guides uh, of one type or another, and also for setting up things like um, back tension adjustments. Uh, there's a head puller, so for typically VHS, but it could apply to other formats as well, that uh, can do these into the screws on the top of the video head, and that can push it off the spindle. Very often you don't need those anyway. Um, I know on the something like the Sony EVS 9000E, uh, it's kind of got a puller built into the heads, which is quite a nice design. Um, and some odd other tools as well, screwdrivers and such, uh, and I think we've got some small Allen keys there. Let's see if the other kit's any different. Similar sort of fare. Oh, we've got some nice, uh, very small circlip pliers. And of course, you know, very often when you buy circlip pliers, they all look okay until you actually come to use them and find that they just won't get small enough to actually uh, be usable on a really small circlip. Oh, and I have here my own personal collection of uh, these are the motor couplings for Panasonic K-series decks, and I've got about four of those left. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this and learned a little bit about messing about with uh, 8mm camcorders. Please do remember to like, share and especially subscribe, and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. <laughs>